there's a game called Internet Life. It has action, and pumping, and puzzles. This game combines different genres. In general it sucks up a lot of time and money. That's why a fast start is important. Start of the game. Lily is told that she is very beautiful. The main character's name is Lilia. She was recently born. She used to live in Japan. She was 30 and loved manga. Games and books. But it's not clear how she was reborn in a world like medieval Europe. The girl's mum said she was very nice. She told the girl's father to look at her big, sparkling eyes. The girl's mum said she'd make a lovely girl when she grew up. That's the main character's mum Iris Carroll. She's the owner of the Carroll family land. The protagonist's father's name is Guy Carroll. He's the head of the Order of Knights serving the royal palace. Though the protagonist doesn't remember his name. Or the cause of her death. Her parents love her very much. So she's happy. Anyway, she's the duke's daughter. It was hard for her to believe it. But Lily decided she was going to live her life to the fullest. Lily reached for the documents in the books, but at that moment, her mother took the papers from her daughter and said they were for her work. Iris ordered the winds of frequency to hand over the child's toy. At that moment, the toy flew into her hands. The protagonist realized that there was magic in this world. Just like in the game. She thought she'd have to grow up as fast as possible. To get started as soon as possible, she decided that first she needed to strengthen her body so she could move around freely. Then learn to read and write. To do sorcery one must have an encyclopedic knowledge. As Lily concentrated, she saw that there was something inside her. She realized that it must be the same magic power. The protagonist thought that it would take special training to master it. She thought that once she had the power, she would become an adventurer. The maid told the girl's mum that her daughter's magical powers were growing rapidly. Iris said that the girl was as strong as her father. Lilia decided that she would work hard. Lily is now three years old. She now knows how to read and write. She thought that now she can write the early books and manga that she loves so much, but the protagonist didn't know if they would be a hit if they were published. At that moment she noticed a paper on the table that said tax. Her mother went up to the girl and apologized. She said she had accidentally put those papers in her picture book. The main character Iris Carroll's mum is the land baron of the Carroll family. The main character remembered playing a game like this in a past life. A game about rebuilding a farm. Lily remembered that it was fun and wanted to try it too. Opening the document she read that the southern lands are very poor so her mother writes a petition for a tax abatement every year. And they ask for financial aid. The reason is the small harvest so they need to increase the cultivated area. The protagonist went to her mother and asked her if she could ask her something. The protagonist told her mother that if the southern lands grow delicious vegetables, their situation will improve. She suggested building new houses and increasing their wages then they could survive the winter. That's what the main character did in the game. Iris asked her daughter who she thought would build the houses. After all, cutting down the forest also needs both people and money. Lily said that in the winter they have other work there. It would help if they handed over management of the land to people and everyone would work it. The money they spend to help them they can get back in a few years. The girl said that the money they spent on the old houses she was counting the tax credits. At this point, her mother told her that working in the winter is not affected by tax credits or the number of crops. The woman explained that everything it says is not true. She told her daughter that she shouldn't pursue this further without having proof. Iris explained that the losses in the lands are caused by demons and other circumstances. She told Lilia that she had too little information, which made her assumptions not very correct. They can't be used. The protagonist realized that of course things couldn't be that good. The people who live in this land have their own problems. And in the game, things are very different. But her mum told the girl that she was glad she was taking an interest in it. She offered her daughter to think about it together and the protagonist agreed. Running an estate isn't easy. But Lilia thought that they have to solve the problem one by one. It's like a quest in a game and the girl thought it was fun. But she decided to increase the territory of their estate. The action shifts to Guy. He says his daughter is too clever. Another man tells him he loves his daughter too much. This is Emperor Robert von Luxel. The emperor asked Gaius if he thought everyone counted financial statements and petition from the age of five. 
Iris used to be told she couldn't have children but she gave birth to a daughter who Gaius thought was beautiful brilliant determined, and she also has beauty hair. Guy said it wasn't just that. He said that the other day when she asked if she could have a pet he thought she'd ask for a kitten or something. But she brought a higher spirit. The action shifts to Iris. She said that apparently the recent rain had damaged all the lands. She ordered the servant to quickly find men to fix the dam. The mother told her daughter that her help could use some help. The girl agreed and told them to leave it to her and her spirits. Now the main character is five years old. She told that the wind spirit Isura will find out how things are in the northern villages, and after the water spirit Leisure would change the water level so that the river would not go out of its banks. Leisure told the girl that he would do whatever she wanted. The protagonist thanked the spirit. The emperor was surprised that Lilia had a higher spirit. He said that only the heads of battle mags and superiors can handle them. Especially to control them you need great power. He asked if this was all in five years. Gaius told him that the magical potential of a lily is not probable. The emperor said that she is indeed a genius. He told Gaius to bring his daughter to the palace because he wanted to meet her. Gaius asked if he wanted to use her in politics. He didn't want to allow that. The emperor reminded the man that he was the head of the Order of Knights and asked him to think about the country for a second. The protagonist used core magic and told the spirits to eat. Leisure said that the protagonist had very tasty power. After that, the spirits flew away. At this point, Iris told the girl that she did well as always. The woman said that never before had a person had so much power. Lilia asked if that was a bad thing. Her mum explained to her that inside people there is a core of magic that allows them to embody it in space. Such a technique had never existed before and only she could use it. Iris said that the fact that Lilia controls the spirits and uses the orb means that she is sent by the god himself. The woman said that the girl is not just an adventurer. She said that since they had never seen such a thing, she couldn't use the sphere of magic anywhere. Lilia asked why. Iris explained that if word of this got out and other people started using her for influence and money, because she was a child, the protagonist knew that thanks to special training as a child, she had gained power that went beyond common sense. That's why she asked for magic cheats. Lilia thought that today she would also work hard. But at that moment her mum stopped her and told her that she could gather those papers and go. Iris reminded her that her daughter was having her birthday party tomorrow. The protagonist questioned why they were celebrating at the emperor's palace instead of at home. Iris explained that tomorrow Gaius will be there all the time and won't be able to come home. So his majesty will arrange everything. Mum said that tomorrow she will be dressed as a real princess. Lily is an aristocrat and the daughter of the head of a knightly order and at five years old, she's already a beauty and a magic genius. She thought she couldn't have her birthday in a palace. In this country there are three princes one is four years old, the second is six years old, and by the third is eight years old. Lily was furious at just the thought of political marriages. The protagonist thought it was bad. The water spirit said that since she didn't like it so much maybe she wouldn't go. He said they could have a storm tomorrow but the protagonist said she didn't have to do that. At this point the girl realized that maybe there was another way. Lily thought that if she would celebrate her birthday in the palace after that would follow the obligatory wedding with the prince and after that, the political influence of her childhood. The girl thought she would make a great evil ducal daughter. Lily thought that in that case she would play the same way as little girls. The protagonist thought that if she decided not to go to the party, she would fall into the disfavor of the imperial family and get a bad ending. And she didn't want that at all. The spirits asked Lilia if she was okay, because they were worried. The protagonist wanted to play a RPG about adventure and estate management. The next day the maid told the girl that she was beautiful. The protagonist thanked her. The girl's parents praised her beauty. Guy said that Lilia looked as if she had stepped out of a painting. Lilia thanked them. At that moment, the father asked his daughter if she was feeling well. The protagonist realized that they were beginning to understand. Guy told the girl that she was doing great, he thanked her for thinking about their people. But her father told her not to overstretch herself. He said that Lilia could always ask him for help. Iris confirmed this and said that sometimes you can afford to rest. The protagonist adored her parents for their kindness. She decided that for their sake she would give 100%. When they arrived at the palace, the protagonist ran to the front and said that she was absolutely fine and would be a good girl. 
When they entered the room, the emperor called them in. The whole family was there. Empress Shirley. The emperor's first son Isaac. The emperor's second son Leonard. And the emperor's third son Fernando. Iris thanked the emperor for inviting her. Gaius exhibited his daughter Lily. The protagonist bowed her head and thanked the emperor for inviting them to this lovely garden. She gave her name and said she was the only daughter of Gaius Carroll. After that, she introduced her spirits. On her right shoulder is the water spirit of Leisure. And on the left the sylph of Asura. The girl said that they signed a contract with her and became her friends. The emperor was surprised that these were the same spirits he had heard about. He said that Lilia was almost the same age as his sons. The emperor said that he would be glad that they would become good friends. Lilia said she was not worthy of such an honor. At this point Leonard said she didn't need to talk about honor. The boy said that the water spirit is very cool and asked to touch it. But at that moment, the leisure slapped the boy's hands. The protagonist apologized and said that the spirit does not like other people. There are no such calm higher spirits. At this point Leonardo began to cry. The emperor tried to explain to his son that he didn't have to do that. He told me that spirits only love their owners. Then Fernando cried too. Lilia knew the boy was only six and in the first year of junior high school. She decided she wouldn't do anything. At that moment Leonardo turned to the girl and said that she had to give what they asked for and called her an upstart. The protagonist was surprised at the audacity of him calling her an upstart at her own birthday party. Lily looked at her parents and saw that although they were angry, they were smiling. She thought they were going to yell at their daughter. At that moment an unknown man appeared and turned to the boys and asked why they were crying. When the protagonist saw the guy she was surprised at how handsome he was. The boy approached his majesty and asked what had happened. The emperor explained that Leonardo had behaved foolishly and cried. Lilia did not understand why the guy came but was still very surprised by his beauty. The protagonist hid behind her father's back. But she couldn't take her eyes off the guy. The guy approached the girl's father and apologized for the inconvenience his majesty's son Leonardo had caused them. He asked if he could ask them to go with him until Leonardo calmed down. The protagonist didn't understand what that meant. Guy told his daughter that they had to go but the girl still stood behind his back. At this point Guy walked up to her and asked if she was okay. He said she was very cute and small. The guy laughed and thanked the girl. The main character was surprised and didn't understand if this is in all games for little girls. She didn't understand anything. At this point the guy asked permission to introduce himself. His name is Erk von Ruxel. He's the emperor's nephew. Beautiful black hair, golden eyes and nice facial features. The protagonist thought he was respected and a god of everything. She thought she couldn't look him in the eye. At this point, the girl's mum told her not to be rude and to stand up normally, but when the protagonist turned around she realized that she couldn't look at him. At this point Iris apologized to Irk and said that it looked like their daughter was a bit shy of him. At this point she said that their daughter had just turned five years old and no one had congratulated her. Lily was very surprised and didn't understand why her mum was saying that. She told her mum that it was disrespectful to ask such a thing of a member of the royal family especially on their first meeting. Lilia told her mum that she was embarrassing him. The protagonist couldn't even say his name. She thought she was pathetic. At that moment, the guy came up to her and congratulated her. The girl was so embarrassed that she fell down. She was against this course of events. She didn't realize how she got on the romance line. His hair black as pitch, reminiscent of rain. Eyes golden in color, glistening like honey. He's serious and doesn't like to smile. And his smile is very awkward for a girl. When the protagonist remembered how the guy congratulated her she was embarrassed. At that moment, the wind spirit told Leisure to lean forward. The water spirit didn't realize what nonsense he had just heard. But at that moment the protagonist used magic and a huge pillar of mana appeared. Lily saw a beautiful blue sky. She thought that it was so blue and beautiful and it suited Irk so well. The girl said that if she could cut out a slice of the sky and present it to him. At this point the protagonist realized that there was no ceiling and asked how long she had been sleeping. At that moment, Iris entered the room. She asked her daughter how she managed to conjure in her sleep. The woman said that just a little more and the ceiling would have fallen on her. Lilia apologized but her mother told her that wasn't enough. 
she said the girl's magical powers were very great, like yesterday she needed to be more restrained. Gaia said it wasn't that bad as luckily no one was hurt. Iris breathed a sigh of relief and said she was a little less worried now. Mum turned to Lily. She said that the girl looks like a child but if she is having a hard time she can consult with them and not try to do everything alone. Because she's still five years old. Mum asked the girl what she had dreamt. The protagonist realized she couldn't speak, that she was so worried because she had seen that gentleman in her dream. At this point Iris stood up and told her daughter that it was all right she could leave everything to her mother. Iris said she couldn't make it worse. Lily didn't understand what was wrong with her mum and why she looked like a mischievous child. A little while later Guy left for the castle for service. Mum told the girl that they would go and have breakfast. At that moment the butler appeared and apologized for intruding on the conversation. But he explained that there was a very urgent matter. Iris told her daughter to go to the dining room. The protagonist agreed but she didn't understand what was wrong. Lily was sitting in the dining room but because her mum was late she didn't want to eat alone. At that moment the spirits appeared and said they were here. At that moment the protagonist used magic and gave the spirits something to eat. But Leisurer told the girl that it was too little. He explained that he was tired to death. And also risked his life to save her. The protagonist thanked him for that. Isura said that this was the first time. He said that Lilia was just excited. The protagonist confirmed this. She said that although they had once let experiments go to waste, no matter how crazy they were, but she apologized for her rudeness. Leisurer told the protagonist that she is a grown-up girl and she needs to calm down. But Isura told Leisurer not to talk like that because this is the first time they are seeing such a strong child. At that moment Iris entered the room and asked the girl if she would mind if they had a guest for breakfast. At that moment Irk entered the room. The protagonist didn't understand why he was here. Irk told her that the emperor had heard an explosion in the morning. He was very worried about the protagonist so he came here to check it out. Irk noticed how much the girl was agitated and asked what happened. He apologized for surprising her so much. At that moment her mum told the girl to behave herself in front of the guest. Lilia stood up and lifted her head. She apologized for looking so unkempt. But Irk said that there was no need to apologize as he was the one who should have apologized for the unexpected visit. The protagonist realized that Irk couldn't see her eyes because she was too low, but if she raised her head, she'd realize. And there's nothing she can do about it. Irk said that he had heard that the mishap in the morning had happened because the girl had been careless in using magic. He asked if she had hurt herself. The protagonist thanked him for worrying about her. At that moment, Iris motioned for the boy to sit down. Lilia calmed herself and thought that her mum would take care of the guy. She decided to increase the circulation of magic throughout her body, and become stronger. The guy sat down next to the protagonist and she was very surprised. Iris asked the guy if he was his majesty's assistant. Irk is only 15 years old and he works so hard. It is said that he doesn't attend the academy. Irk confirmed this and said that he doesn't have any magic power so he doesn't go there. Instead, his majesty let him study with him and help him. Iris apologized but said it was fine that he could work in the castle despite his age and lack of magical powers. Irk replied that he was just lucky that his majesty was related to him. The main character was so embarrassed that she couldn't taste the soup and had no idea what they were talking about. The girl's mum told the guy not to belittle himself. She said the fact that he worked so hard and carefully deserved praise. Iris asked her daughter if she thought the same. But the protagonist turned away and hoped her mum wouldn't pay attention to her. At that moment Lily turned to her mother and said that Mr. Irk's very existence was like a divine miracle, and she couldn't express her gratitude for having him. The protagonist did not realize the absurdity of her words and did not understand why everyone was silent. Lilia tried to be absolutely calm. At that moment thanked her for such words. After that, the protagonist hit her head on the table. Later in the room, the mother apologized to the girl. The protagonist said that she was fine and it was just a scratch, but Iris said that her daughter had a scar on her face. She said her girl had fallen in love and she had to support her. The woman lamented that all their hard work had gone to waste. Lilia thought her mum was a prisoner of conscience. In fact, the non-protagonist also thought Irk was right for her. In a past life, he was her object of adoration. The protagonist tagged him on social media. She bought merch and was a fan. 
and his icy stare and his directness. And the girl's heart is still torn out like before, the main character wanted to tell the guy that he looked good in those glasses and asked him to say something again. At this point the girl's mum noticed that she was thinking about the guy but the protagonist denied everything. Iris said that there was no work today so Lily could rest. At that moment Guy entered the room, he asked if the little asshole had hurt her. Guy apologized to his wife and said he'd sort it out. He told his daughter that he would avenge her, the main character tried to stop him and told her mum to do something too. At this point the butler told Iris that they were ready. Iris said then they wouldn't show right away, later, Lilia told her father how it really was. She said that she just fainted and hurt herself, Gaius said that his majesty said that Irk would answer for the wounds he inflicted on Lilia and they would be engaged. Gaius said that he just got it wrong, the protagonist said that the engagement was a misunderstanding. At that moment she realized her father's words. She asked if it was really a misunderstanding. Lilia couldn't believe she would marry an Irk though given her title and Mila it didn't seem so strange even at that age. Yes and a wedding with someone from the royal family could already be talked about, the main character remembered her mum's words that she would do everything. When Lilia came running to her mother Iris told her that she would now become the wife of Mr. Irk, mum gave the girl the contract of their engagement. The protagonist asked what it was. Her mother told her that it was a copy of the original document already in the castle, so nothing could be undone. The protagonist realized that her mother had initiated the whole thing. The girl just wanted to be adventurous and run the estate on her own. The wedding between the Carols, who have high status and the aristocracy, the imperial house, will be very successful for the latter. However, there is one but. His Majesty's children don't care, Lily thought that Irk looked like a member of the idol group. And she didn't understand how he could be her husband. She imagined a situation where the guy comes home and she meets him, how she asked him what he wanted to eat or the bathroom or her how the guy chose her and said he wanted her of course. The protagonist thought there was no room for regret in her life, she faints for the second time that day. Later when the girl woke up her mum asked if she loved Mr. Irk. Iris said she thought the girl would be happy and asked if she was wrong. Lily said she wasn't wrong, but he is so much older than her that she is not sure if she can make him happy. The protagonist wished him a happy marriage. You can love a person in many ways, but the protagonist is not the kind of person who needs mutual love. She just wants to be there to help him be happy. Guy said his daughter was too young, but Iris told him to shut up. She told her daughter that a happy wedding is impossible. She said that if Guy couldn't marry her, he'd be alone forever. The protagonist didn't understand why this was so. Her mum explained to her that Mr. Irk's parents were his highness and mistress. They loved him and he often helped his majesty with advice. But he was executed as a traitor. A few years ago, his highness started a rebellion to seize the throne. He wanted more and lured many princes to his side. He got many aristocratic families involved and started a war. The rebellions were crushed and he was executed. Almost everyone who sided with him was stripped of their land. After his wife was imprisoned, she was found to be pregnant and she was imprisoned for the duration of the pregnancy because the child was innocent. Then she was executed the day after she gave birth. That child was Mr. Irk. His birth was no cause for further controversy, he was stripped of his right to the throne and taken into care. That's how he lives. Although he is a member of the royal family, he is first and foremost the son of the head of the rebellion, it is the emperor who decides who he will marry. The protagonist has realized that the only thing left is marriage for political gain. She realized it was like a teenager with a tragic backstory from the game. Irk was asked how he wasn't ashamed to wander around the palace as if he was the master of the place. I ask you, doesn't he know about the sin his parents committed? Someone told these men that the boy is now under his majesty's protection. One wrong word and their own heads will come off. At that moment, the boy knocked on his majesty's room and said he was back. His Highness told the boy that he was very lucky. His Majesty told him that he was engaged to Leela. He showed the engagement document that had recently come from the Duchess of Carol. The Emperor said they could keep a lily who was as strong as the smartest of men. And the country would benefit from it. The Emperor told the boy that he was good enough to win her heart. The Emperor said that of course it would be easier if the girl married one of his sons. But he said he would think about it later. He told the boy that he could go, 
and also asked him not to let the Lily mood take over. Iris told her daughter that she suggested it because she thought His Majesty would agree if she married him. She asked if she wouldn't, the protagonist realized that the royal family needed her. Moreover, the Carols also benefited because they would become more influential if the protagonist entered into a marital relationship with a blood relative of the royal family. Their interests were aligned. Iris knowing that Lilia will not refuse the engagement if she finds out about the origin of Irk. The girl didn't expect anything else, but she told her mum she wasn't quite right. The protagonist thought that if only she could marry him she would do anything to make him happy. Iris said that in that case she was very happy, Lily asked if there was a job for her today. Her mum told her to rest today because tomorrow they have a lot of things to do. The protagonist ran away and thanked her mum. Guy said that he thought his daughter would marry him. At this point Iris asked Guy how long he would sit idly by instead of helping Lily. The woman said the girl looked like she had already made up her mind, she said that they would see what would come of it. Iris was actually a little afraid though. The protagonist thought she'd have to work hard to make the guy happy, firstly, she'd have to be fluent in land management. The protagonist realized that she would need the help of the common people in the future when she became the leader of this place then you need to achieve equal power with the royal family. To do that, you need to study magic and strengthen your accomplishments. Then there's money, the protagonist thought that a guy should be able to buy whatever he wants and do what he likes, Lily praised herself and said that she was a smart girl who worked late and without weekends for the sake of her lover. She was ready to endure anything to make her boyfriend happy, she is ready to roll mountains for her lover because she is the protagonist of this game. At this point, the girl asked where the guy was. Isira I told the girl that he had already left for the castle, the protagonist frowned and the spirits were worried about her. In fact the protagonist thought she was really screwed up because she had already passed out twice, Isira told her that it was already becoming her family's thing. The protagonist thought it couldn't just go away. She decided that she would write a letter. Apologize for worrying and tell him of the engagement. The protagonist adored the guy's kind look, handsome figure, and pleasant voice. She thought he was really godlike. In the letter she wrote that from the bottom of her heart she wished him health and prosperity, but the girl realized that this was too formal. After that she wrote that she congratulated on the engagement and looked forward to the guy's reply. After a while, the protagonist still couldn't write the letter, she realized how difficult it was to write to her loved ones. Because of all these attempts, her hand was very sore. At that moment the wind spirit suggested to the girl to use magic. He showed her how to do it and Lilia was very surprised how he did it. Isira explained that it was a simple spell made of wind and fire. He used fire so it could be used. Scorched everything on the paper like a burn. Lashire explained that it was like a spell to change the temperature. The protagonist had never heard of such a spell before. At that moment she realized that she could use this spell and then she could write documents without using pen and paper. Then her efficiency would increase. For example, she could type, like on a computer, one sheet of paper in the time it took her to write a line before. And if she can type several documents in an instant, she won't need to copy them all the time. The protagonist thought it was like a printer. Lily tried to create small magic circles and collect them and use fire with air to burn out the letters. But after that, the piece of paper caught fire. Isira told the girl to keep the small fire going. After the protagonist made a mistake again. Then she tore the paper with a strong wind and the wind spirit told her to try again. It was hard for the girl to maintain the right power and she thought that even her mana was not enough. The action carried over to the Irk. He stood in the library and looked at his plans for the evening. First he wanted to see how the princes were doing, then the papers for his majesty. At that moment a lily spirit appeared in front of him and there was a letter. The main character wrote that the guy must have been very surprised when he was told of the engagement. But she said that she would definitely be the girl who would provide him with a happy life, so she asked him to believe her and join her. The guy smiled and thanked her. At that moment he noticed that the edges of the letter were burnt. Later Iris showed her daughter the beautiful bows that were made just for such an occasion. The woman told her daughter that she would wear them to her birthday party tomorrow. His Highness wants to restore relations with them, so as an apology for the spoilt birthday party he wants to have the party again. So tomorrow they go to the palace again. In fact, the protagonist is sick of it all and just wanted to work at home in peace. 
At that moment mum said and that this is a great chance. She said that the girl will be able to flirt with Irk in front of his majesty and show that they love each other. Lilia agreed and realized there was nothing she could do about it. Her mother asked her to finish early today and get some rest. She said that the girl could already put it all together. Iris noticed that there was already a backlog of waterway maintenance paperwork. She said she should make copies of them and give them to the entrepreneurs. At that moment Lilia asked for permission to do it. Iris was surprised and said that there were a lot of documents, but the protagonist used a spell and had everything done in a second. Iris was very surprised that now her daughter had used a new spell. The protagonist explained that this spell is for instant printing and it's called a printer. It not only copies but also creates new documents. The girl explained that it is necessary to create a thin layer of magic, the size of paper, to write there the text and calculations you need, then, as when working with a computer you put it to the paper and it is ready. Now it is much more pleasant to create documents. Iris was surprised that magic could even do that. He said that this magic is really an amazing thing. At this point, the protagonist told her mum that she had written a treatise on magic clots. The clot and the density of magical power. Magic without chanting. Lilia told her mum that she would like to take this work to the government to confirm its accuracy. After reading a bit of the report Iris said it was a great report. She said it would turn their previous ideas about magic upside down. She said that since they had Lilia as an example neither the emperor nor the mags would be able to ignore her. Iris asked what the girl was aiming for since she was talking about confirming the fidelity of the work. The protagonist told her mum that she wants to become the strongest mage in this country, a sage. Iris told her daughter that if she becomes the smartest person in the country with political influence she can protect Irk. Lily said that was right. She said that she would combine all of this with running the domain. The girl's mum sighed and said that's where she was going. She said that in that case she should hold off on the report. After all, if the world knew that she was a genius capable of becoming a sage, she would be hindered by the aristocracy. Success, wealth, honor, they'll all use her for their own ends. In such a case, the engagement will not go smoothly. The protagonist asked why. She thought the engagement document was about to be accepted. She thought she would just ignore the other aristocrats. Iris agreed but asked what if her partner suddenly died. She said there could be ill will among the aristocrats too. Firstly, when everyone knew of their engagement, they would have to prevent any possibility of its cancellation. Then they will deliver this treatise to His Majesty personally. If the situation calms down, they can openly stop the sage. The protagonist has realized. Her mum said she would help her and asked her to do her best. The girl didn't want to let anyone even touch the irk. She thought that then she would gradually write a treatise and accumulate achievements. For Irk's sake, she wanted to work her way to the top. Iris didn't know how long her daughter would be able to protect the boy from evil adults. In the morning when the protagonist woke up she realized that she had passed out yesterday while she was working. At that moment Irk wished her good morning. The protagonist jumped up and asked why he was in her room. The guy explained that Duke Carroll had asked him to wake the girl up. He apologized for entering her room without permission. Isura told the girl that the guy would be accompanying her at tonight's party. The girl bowed her head and apologized to the guy. She said that though she was too young to be his bride she was willing to do anything to make him happy. So she asked him to let her marry him. She said that if the guy already had a girl he liked, she'd help him in any way she could. Money, influence, working, everything at his disposal to make him happy. At this point Irk told the girl not to worry. He said she probably didn't want to marry a man much older than her. Although the engagement could be broken off at any time. But the protagonist said that's not true. She said that she was willing not to marry him if she became an obstacle to his well-being. Irk was uncomfortable and suggested that they go out for breakfast anyway. He said the duke was already waiting. The guy stroked the girl's head and she was very embarrassed. His thin long beautiful fingers touched her head. She could feel him. Lilia thought that they had already spent a lot of time with the guy so she wouldn't faint. At that moment she stood up casually at the last sir and he bit her back. Irk noticed that there was blood coming from the girl's hand. Leisurer apologized and said he was just scared. But Leisurer told him to stop the blood and not to apologize. At that moment Irk asked him to show his hand because he wanted to bandage it. He took off his handkerchief and the protagonist saw his collarbone. The guy thought the girl was worse and said he would call a doctor right away. 
Later at the doctor's, the man said it wasn't deep and should heal quickly. He told them to disinfect the wound twice a day with the mixture he had brought and everything would be fine. At that moment Gaius burst into the room. He asked if the girl was hurt and if the guy had done it all. The protagonist calmed him down and told him that he had got it all wrong. Guy said he didn't recognize the guy. After all, now Lilia is forever hurting herself because of him. Iris asked him not to say so at this point she turned to her daughter and asked her to tell the truth. Had she fainted again because she had done something stupid? Iris said that it was not Mr. Irk's fault then and told her daughter that he was in the living room now so she should apologize to him. Lilia realized that she had put the guy down again and needed to apologize to the front. As she was standing in front of the door a guy appeared behind her and asked if her wound was okay. The girl confirmed it was and apologized for bothering him. The guy was a bit relieved though sad. But the protagonist thought he was beautiful even when sad. At that moment he apologized, took her in his arms and said it must be painful for the girl to walk. She said he should entertain her until she rested. The guy asked to be allowed to do it. The main character thought it was her lucky day. She realized that being little was very cool. The guy said it was cold in the corridor so he suggested we go to the room. At that moment the protagonist noticed that it was really cold in the corridor. At that moment the whole corridor was covered in ice. Lily realized that it was leisure. Urk asked if that wall was really ice. But the main heroine interrupted him and asked him to let go. As Isolde approached the wall she felt a strong water magic, just as she thought this ice was created by the leisure. The girl assumed that this ice was his tears. She told the boy that she would melt the ice to open the doors and the boy should duck. The main character used fire magic, a fireball. The guy realized that the girl didn't sing anything. Lily realized that this forest was created by a higher spirit. And it wouldn't be easy to melt it but even a fraction of her magical power could satisfy the higher spirits. So she could use just a little to start conjuring. In a word, she can concentrate a bunch of magic power and might and fire once. After using a bunch of spells, she melted the ice. The guy realized that she didn't need to use chance. His majesty had told him about it but he didn't think the girl was that strong. He watched a lot of martial mags training but they all used chance unlike her. The boy asked what she was studying to be able to do sorcery. There are two kinds of mags in the world. One transfers their magical power to the spirit who already performs the spell. They're called spirit mags. Others create a magic circle in which the conditions and the result are written down and activate it with their magical power. They are called circle mags. Both types use chanting. They put magical power into their voice and chant a spell, thus using magic. However, the main character had training with herself before she even learned to speak. She's just self-taught. The guy said that she is really talented he said that his majesty needs her. When the protagonist entered the room Isira asked her not to scold the water spirit because he loves her very much. The protagonist bowed her head and asked Isira to come out and not to sit under the cupboard. The water spirit cried and said that he had hurt her and she was bleeding. But Lilia apologized and said it was her fault. She apologized for stepping on his tail. She asked if it must have hurt. The water spirit replied that he was fine and asked how she was feeling. He started apologizing and hugged the girl. Urk said they have a very good relationship. The main character said that they are her real friends. The guy said that he is a little jealous. He doesn't understand what the spirits are saying. The guy remembered people discussing. They said that the emperor's late brother's son, Urk, had no magical powers at all. They asked if he couldn't do anything at all. He can't even send a letter. They said it must be God's punishment for disobeying his majesty. His majesty said not to worry about it to the boy. He said he never had a predisposition for magic. He told him to study hard and then he would help him by giving him advice. Urk watched as the mags got into formation. They said they would use the magic circle as soon as they got into position. He thought that battle mags were very cool. He really wished he could do magic. He thought that if he could cast magic, he could help his majesty and the battle mags. At that moment, a blue bird appeared above him. He asked her where she was from and if she was kept in the castle. The boy heard it but didn't understand it. At that moment he took out a biscuit that his grandmother had recently given him from the kitchen. He offered it to the bird to eat, but it just flew away. This bird is a higher spirit and it returned to its master. 
the guy thought that if he had magic power, he could talk to it. Without it, he's useless. At that moment, an easier flew onto the guy's head. The protagonist was surprised. After all, usually the higher spirits only touch those with whom they have a contract. The easier used magic and burned on a piece of paper that if the guy would treat the duchess well, they would help him a little. At this point he cried and said he really appreciated it. The easier flew up to the girl she asked what he had told the lad. The wind spirit said that he told him the girl's deepest secret that she was ashamed to talk about. The protagonist asked what it meant. Irk looked at the girl and realized that she was an amazing person. With her he became very warm in his heart. After a while the maid told the girl that everything was ready. The main character has never worn a black dress but the maid said it suits her very well. Gothic style is something new to her and it is also the color of Irksan and the protagonist was shaking with excitement. Leisure replied that that's why he should wear the same color too. To the protagonist she said that the bow he was wearing matched her bows. Leisure decided to wear a red bow. At that moment the girl's mum entered the room. She said that her daughter is very beautiful. At this point she told her to stand next to her future husband. Iris said that it was important that they wear the same colors in public. At this point the woman said that they go so well together. The protagonist realized that she too had red hair and it exceeded her expectations. At that moment the Asura flew up to the guy and Iris realized that the higher spirit had accepted him. She said it was just what he needed to please his majesty. She asked her daughter if she understood. She said not to relax even though their betrothal document had already been accepted. The emperor, due to his influence, could have it cancelled. The woman said we mustn't let it get to that point. The protagonist will be pushed to marry one of the princes. So they should act as agreed. As she left, Lily asked him to leave this for her. The guy took her hand and she decided to go. She decided to do everything for the sake of the future Irk Lord. After a while when the girl was traveling in the carriage with the guy she looked at his silky black hair that swayed. Outside the window was a dreary landscape, and the protagonist thought the guy looked really cute with that beautiful little laughing bird on his shoulder. And his barely their ancestors are I'm rude peerless. You can see his pink tongue through them, the protagonist realized that his sense of style was certainly not to be denied. At this point, the guy told the girl that he was a little embarrassed that she was looking at him like that. The protagonist turned away. She closed her eyes and thought that she shouldn't look at him like that. She thought that if this was a game some action would have started by now. She wondered why there were no smartphones in this world. It's a complicated device, though. A camera she could and could create. With a printer spell. The protagonist thought she would definitely make one. Just so that the guy's awesome style would remain in history forever. At this point the guy asked the girl if something was wrong and what she was thinking about. He stroked her head and told her that they would be here soon. Zala would calm down and that she shouldn't be so shaken. His voice soothed the girl. Later when they arrived the guy helped her out of the carriage. The protagonist didn't realize that he was going to carry her in his arms again. Irk didn't really realize whether the girl was coming or not. Lilia was confused. She didn't think they had agreed that the guy would look at her like that. She wondered where his awkward smile had gone. At this point she said she would go by herself because she didn't want to make him uncomfortable. Irk said it was no trouble at all. Besides, he might be a little uncomfortable. But that's her privilege as an engaged woman. Guy told his daughter that she wanted her father to carry her in his arms. But Iris pulled him away. Guy offered to go too. He took her in his arms. The protagonist really liked this new place. When they came out and were greeted by the emperor and his wife. The protagonist thanked for the invitation. The empress apologized for what happened last time. She once again wished the girl a happy birthday. When Lilia looked up she saw the emperor empress first and third sons. But the second was not there. Irk told the girl that Leonard was under house arrest so she had nothing to worry about. When the boy sat down he took the girl on his lap. The protagonist was very embarrassed but her mum gave her a stern look. The emperor said he had heard a lot and the family. But he said they do have a warm relationship. Iris said that Lilia fell in love at first sight, Mr. Irk is also very kind to her. She said that they seem to be doing very well. The empress asked but Lily is only five years old. She asked if it was too early to be trained. Iris said that was not true. 
She said that the girl may be too young but she is old enough to be together with Irk besides she would like to keep her daughter's crush. His majesty said he understands but he too wants to keep his son's first love alive. Iris said that the queen is a very kind mother. His majesty said that her sons are very diligent in their studies. The empress said that this is true. She said she was sure that Lily's talent inspired them. She said that perhaps it was because they were so compatible with each other. Iris said that was very nice to hear. The protagonist didn't see this passionate crush of theirs and this confrontation between the two leaves the main idea didn't realize that. The social life of the nobility was too scary. She wanted to try to keep her mouth shut like her father. At this point Irk asked the girl if something was wrong. But Lily said nothing she would like a cup of tea. The boy gave it to her and stroked her head. The emperor said Lilia was amazing. And made this face. The emperor told the guy that he didn't think he liked importing children. Irk said he was being kind to a very good girl who was well behaved. The main character noticed the reaction of the emperor's eldest son and thought that means Irk is not so good with these two. Irk said they are boys and of course they are a bit naughty, and it's his job to teach them to learn too. It's his duty. At this point the protagonist started to envy the boys. She would like to take their place in the class. At that moment, Iris turned to his majesty. He wished Lily a happy birthday and asked what about the engagement. She asked if his majesty would be celebrating. The emperor said that there was no need to hurry as the marquise's feast had just begun. The protagonist knew she wanted to keep him on the hook with the engagement letter. But the girl realized she was after the prince. Iris said that Lilia is very clever and smart, even for a girl of that age if she forces her into an engagement she doesn't want, she might even run away from the country. The mother said she's worried about her daughter. After all, she might take this with her. The girl's mother took out a document. The emperor asked what it was. The woman explained that it was a paper her daughter had written. The emperor read about the magic nugget and the lack of chance. He asked the Marquis of Carroll if what was written there was true. Iris said she didn't know and couldn't believe it. But her daughter can use magic without chance, and she creates magic one by one. The emperor remembered that Gaius had told him a little about it. The emperor asked the girl what kind of magic she uses. The protagonist told him that it is a mass of magic. It is magic that goes through the body, comes out of the body and is fixed in the atmosphere. No textbook or literature mentions it, so she calls it that for convenience. In the case of ordinary magical power, it is unlocked in the atmosphere. It can be maintained by amplifying it to a high concentration. Highly concentrated magic power is used to cast high-level spirit spells and draw magic circles. The emperor asked the girl if she could show them this magic here and now. The protagonist didn't know what to do. Lysira reminded her that she had practiced yesterday and asked why not try it. The protagonist remembered that last night before she went to bed she had asked her how best to train in magical manipulation. Lysira had told her that he thought she was good enough at it for a human. But the protagonist said that she just wants to get better. She wants to get her results in printing magic. She wants to be able to print as fast as a photocopier. At this point, Lysira used magic and said that humans are very greedy. He created an ice sculpture that was amazing. He made such an intricate shape in an instant. Leisure suggested that the girl do it. He said to improve the efficiency of use is just a matter of numbers. He said that for since then she had used the magic circle from the book. He asked why doesn't she just get used to forming the formation on the fly. Or I realized it's better to get used to it than wreck rain. She should burn the formation in her eyes. Rewrite just the area of effect of the ice mage. It's okay, it's just like printing it out. It's been three months since then. It was strange for the girl, but she was glad they were engaged. She became a sage and gained fame. She runs the estate and it is becoming more and more stable. She wants to find someone she will truly love and live happily ever after, but it wasn't meant to be. She didn't realize how things turned out this way, the protagonist was teaching the emperor's son's magic. She told Isaac and Leonard that there was no more magic in those areas and suggested they start over. Leonardo said he couldn't see magic and therefore couldn't use it. The protagonist didn't remember giving him permission to call her Lily so casually. At that moment, she brought her hand up to the guy's face. She explained that this was magical vision. It will allow you to see magic and magic circles that are not normally visible to the naked eye. It's magic that thieves use to see traps and tricks. 
It's like the night vision goggles that people see in games and films. At this point Lilia thought it would be useful to make goggles engraved with visualization magic. They would be easy to carry around they could see a wide area. She thought that Eric would be very pleased with her. At this point the guys asked the main character what it was. She explained something they see in the sky is a magic circle that protects this castle. And even further up in the sky is a magic circle that protects the whole country. The main character told the boys that they can see it for a while so they need to practice with it. She said they have a long way to go. Lysira asked Lilia why people are so bad at magic. The girl explained that they are just starting to learn about magic. The water spirit said that he didn't know what Lilia was thinking but she had spent all day with the Eric. The spirit said he can't believe she left the main character alone. But the girl said she was sure the wind spirit was doing it for her. The protagonist thought that while she couldn't be with Eric the spirit was protecting him. But she has already completely blown the events of the engagement crisis and doesn't think she has anything to worry about. That's when the guys noticed that Fernando was missing. They thought he was with them. At this point they noticed that he was standing on the edge of the balcony and fell. The protagonist sent a water spirit to save him. Lysira enlarged and saved Fernando. Leonardo said it was out of the blue. He said the lily dragon was just gorgeous. The protagonist said it was. But it's the third floor so she asked them to be careful when they go out on the balcony. Even in seemingly peaceful everyday life, there are many branching events and branching routes. The unknown man was watching the dragon. He realized it was a spirit of the highest rank. It's also being used by a girl without chanting magic. It's Viscount Das Sale. He said that if they use her properly she could bring in a lot of money. The protagonist thought that maybe there are even some aristocrats who think that way. She thought she'd be careful. At night, the protagonist tried to create a figurine out of ice. Larsa told her it was completely wrong. He said she would melt the ice if you waited too long. The protagonist tried and tried, but nothing worked. Printouts are just written into a document, so you can think of it in two dimensions, length and width. But there's height and width and length and width. So it's three-dimensional. The protagonist realized she had to understand its shape. She had to measure it visually. Then three months ago, the protagonist started making shapes out of ice. She said if she could fit it into the magic circle. But the emperor told her he didn't know such magic existed and called the girl a genius. Erisa asked if that was wrong. She said that her child is a real talent at her age and she even helps her with her work. The emperor said that in that case it was even better. He asked if it was not in her daughter's interest to be trained by a man of a certain rank. But Alice said his highness doesn't understand. The emperor said that the girl should develop her talents and spend them for the achievement of her country. He said he lets her do what she wants to do. At this point the protagonist said she would become an adventurer and go to conquer demons. The emperor said freedom in exchange for achievement. So they gave him a page detailing her abilities. Alice said she'd give it to him if they took it to her. It's a very effective way of dealing with opportunists. The more cards in your hand, the better off they are. The protagonist decided that she would write many more things and write many more articles. The emperor said that he understood. He didn't want this genius to disappear. With his name, he approved of their engagement. At this point, the emperor asked the girl about the work of initiation to magical manipulation without chanting. He asked if he could use it. The protagonist said she didn't know. Said she knew how to manipulate magic before drinking but on the other hand she is not very good at chanting. Iris turned to his majesty and said that it can be difficult for those who use magic as a matter of course. But she said she tried but still can't sustain it outside of her magical body. The emperor realized that this is why they don't know if it is the result of genius or an unknown discovery. I turned to IRA and said that he was not asking her to accept his engagement. Asked if she could teach his sons how to work magic. The protagonist didn't understand why she would do that. I told him these documents would rock the world and he thought she should teach the younger generation. Of course he'll reward her. The protagonist didn't think she should give it up. Research magic, write papers to rule the territory making cameras. There's just so much to do and so little time. But the protagonist has realized that more people who can manipulate magic is a good thing in the sense that it opens up all possible possibilities, not just printouts. For example, they can create tools like refrigerators and washing machines that are similar to the tools of civilization in the past. 
this can help make life so much richer, if you mean the initial investment in labor. After that or I agreed. Nikita said he understood and only asked once anyway. He said he studies diligently. And now he offered to enjoy the feast once more, he gave the papers to the servant and ordered him to bring it into his study and keep it to himself. The protagonist didn't want to be the prince's teacher. She wanted to be teacher Eric's apprentice, when the servant was carrying the documents and he dropped them and the unknown man picked them up and said to be careful. At this point he read about magic without chanting. Eric came to get the protagonist and asked how her classes were going. The protagonist said it was going very well. All the princes are very fast learners so it is a pleasure to teach them. Said that he sees that she has a bright future ahead of her does not the girl confirmed it. At this point Eric turned to the princes and said. To Leonard he said that he wasn't concentrating enough until he had magic power so he needed to refrain from talking in class. To Fernando he told him to keep practicing how to use his spirit to move magic in and out. Isaac said that he needed to practice to consolidate more magic, because it wasn't dense enough. Lilia said goodbye to the prince and they left. Eric said that it looked like the prince was seriously taken to studying. He told the girl that she looks bored when she teaches, but on days when she has classes at the castle, Master Eric comes to get her like this. He always hugs her like this. Eric said that maybe Miss Lilia has a talent for teaching. Lilia learned to look Eric in the eye and talk to him and she's used to this close proximity. She no longer has to worry about blundering in front of Master Eric. Later, the mum told something to the girl. The protagonist was surprised and asked again. Iris apologized for such a quick notice. She told that her friend Marquise is having a party Jana is supposed to go out this afternoon. The girl's father was busy sorting out the accident he informed the protagonist's mum that he wouldn't be able to come home today. Iris was sorry to leave the girl alone so young although there are guards and servants here. So she asked Mr. Eric to stay the night. They agreed without delay. Lily couldn't wait for the night to see the boy. She wasn't ready for it. Mum asked the girl to calm down. She said there was still time before she left if she wanted to help her with her work and the girl agreed. And asked the boy if he would learn gradually. He'd have to take over eventually. The guy said he understood. Later the protagonist collected this month's petitions. Her mum thanked her and asked if she could check the papers she had in case there was a mistake. The wind spirit brought the girls a report on the investigation in the northern town. Eric asked Lilia if there was anything she was interested in. The protagonist did not answer that it is Smetana wall repair work in North Town Carol. The cost there, materials, lodging, etc. The protagonist was presented with everything up to cost. She said that it seemed the amount spent on lodging was too much for 40 working people. Eric asked if that meant they were padding the cost. Iris said they added another banquet fee. And said they'd have to give notice about it. She didn't mind that a lot of the vendors are good-natured but they drink a lot too. Lilia said her mum would ask them if they drank once a month. The girl's mum confirmed this and said that for now she wanted them to make copies of everything. The main character used a spell and in a second made many copies. Later Iris left and Eric asked the girl what she was going to do today. The protagonist was glad it was finally happening. She was going to spend the night with Master Eric. She calmed herself down and said she would be fine. As usual she strengthened her body with magic. And wanted to keep it normal. Lily said that usually she has a tutor to help her with her studies and today she had classes at the royal castle so she was free. So she will study magic and write new papers. That's when the guy suggested a day off. He said that in his opinion the girl is working too much and she needs time to rest. He said that today is a forced holiday. And asked why they shouldn't relax. The main character agreed. She didn't understand why she was so happy. The protagonist watched the guy change his clothes. She liked to watch him undress. If she had a camera, she would have filmed the whole time. She couldn't wait to continue her explorations. At this point the girl caught herself thinking and realized she wanted to relax. But she didn't realize what she was supposed to do. The protagonist was used to sleeping when she was tired. When she's awake, she's doing something else. It was the same in her previous life. She played a game on her phone in between work and listened to music while traveling to work and when she was at work, she played online games all the time, slept everything so it wouldn't interfere with work the next day and repeated this every day when she remembers it. 
rest for her was an activity she enjoyed, and even though Lilia was told to relax she didn't know what to do. At this point flew to her and apologized for waiting. He said that if he had a younger sister she would be the same, he asked what she usually does in her free time. Lilia said magical research and teaching. He asked if she read anything. The protagonist said she read a lot of documents and incidents about inheritance, but the guy said they weren't books. He asked what about the romances. The protagonist said that if it was interesting she could try it. Eric said she wouldn't know until she tried it, or I asked if maybe he could give her some advice. The guy said he preferred adventure novels. Lily said then they'd start interesting adventure stories. And I said he could bring something to read next time too. The main character realized this is what it was, but she didn't understand. Her breasts felt so warm and pleasant. Viscount Beryl watched the protagonist's house and was angry. After all, this house was bigger than his and he didn't like it. The butler told him that they were high-ranking marquises so they could not be compared to him. At this point Beryl ordered the bandits that their job was to return all the papers and notes from Carol's room, and told them to return with only the papers. The bandits were surprised and asked if the papers were worth anything but Beryl told them not to pry. The bandits said they heard that a powerful royal recipe lives in this house. The head of the family is also a great magician. N.A. Beryl told them not to worry about that. Because there are only two people in the house right now, the main character fell asleep and the guy realized that she must be very tired. At that moment the spirits approached the girl and the guy was surprised. The wind spirit wrote on a paper that it is wind magic that cleanses the surface of the body and water magic that regulates rotations and relieves fatigue. Eric said that means it's his year of healing magic and spirits can use such magic too. He asked if they could use it as well as humans. At this point Eric asked the spirit to teach him how to use it. He wanted to teach it to a soldier who was often injured. He said that if of course they would let him do it. At that moment, the spirits noticed the bandits. The wind spirit turned into a man. He said he wouldn't do that. He would be uncomfortable if he had to write on paper all the time. He said it would make it easier for them to talk amongst themselves, or said he didn't know they could take human form. Easier asked to wait and said they would talk about it later. He said that they seemed to have unexpected guests and most likely wanted to keep them company. I told Easier that there are some very suspicious people walking around the garden with their creatures. The manor has a security mechanism if they entered the grounds it would have circled them. The wind spirit said they may have used a spirit capable of breaking through the magic circle. The magic itself is weak. But it can break through the magic circle. They probably spent a lot of time making tiny holes in it. Essil asked if they came to steal something valuable. But that and said he doubted it. The nobleman in charge of the lands has a private army large and small they are scattered around the estate to respond in case of emergencies. Even if they manage to get inside, it's only a matter of time before they are discovered he asked if it's a simple bandit who would take such a risk. Eric realized that maybe they wanted something from the Carroll family. Isir said that whatever it was, they couldn't just let it go. He offered to wake the girl up and tell her. At this point the guy stopped him and asked if they could let her rest a little longer. He said she was tired from work and classes every day so. Easier said that this is a very hard request. After all they are lily spirits and they can only fulfill her wishes. Said the girl is the strongest wizard but she is just a little girl. Marquis is gone and so is Iris. The lad didn't want to scare her. Easier asked the guy what he would do if she was in trouble. The boy said he would take a sword and fight. Easier said that then he would do as the guy says. The wind spirit suggested that Isir take human form so he could talk too. Eric thanked the wind spirit and the wind spirit said he would handle it himself. Said he would go and tell everyone and asked Larsa to watch the bay. The water spirit didn't understand why he had to take orders from the guy. He told the guy not to ignore him, but the wind spirit said he couldn't hear him. Isira said they are here for the same reason to protect the lily then it's much better to cooperate. The water spirit said that might be true but, the wind spirit said he was even glad that there's someone who cares about their precious lily. Just like they care for her. Eric ran through the palace and spoke from immediately sending guards to the courtyard. He said to contact the soldiers nearby because they might have accomplices. One of the butlers said they would try to contact the lord as soon as possible. The boys were taught to use the ball according to royal etiquette. 
he didn't think he could handle a few bandits without any real combat experience. In that case, he didn't realize what he could do now. The bandits ran to the girl's room and one of them ordered to search the child's room because the papers they came for should be there. At that moment the wind spirit appeared in front of them and asked them what they were doing and why they were following etiquette. The bandits asked who he was. The wind spirit said that if they wanted to see him they should have come in through the front door and asked if that wasn't the polite thing to do. The bandits tried to attack him but the wind spirit said that was probably the end of them. He said they had better surrender before they got hurt. After the first blow they fell down and the spirit I asked if they were really that weak. At that moment Isira spotted a small magical beast. He told him that if they don't get much magical power, if given to be more selective about who they work with. At this point one of the bandits stood up and tried to attack the wind spirit with a knife. But Eric saved the spirit. At this point one of the maker tried to use magic but Isira just used the wind and flipped everyone off. He was about to grab it but it flew away. Eric went up to the spirit and asked if he was okay. Well said he was fine asked he wasn't going to go anywhere really well the guy said he was. But he asked the spirit he was alive hardly replenished his magic. Eric said he thought it might be useful to him if the situation got out of hand and it seems his fears were unfounded. But the spirit thanked him for his help. Viscount Beryl thought that without the head of the family they would have less security and realized that he must have been naive. At this point the butler told the man that if they didn't get away soon their pursuers would find them. Beryl said he already knew that. He said he would get the papers. The protagonist heard a loud noise in the distance. She didn't know what it was and thought she should get up. But she felt counting arms gently wrapped around her. She just wanted to stay like that for a while longer. At that moment she woke up and noticed Eric lying in front of her. Gern didn't understand what he was doing here. She realized that the guy had seen her sleeping face again. They had also slept together. But she thought it was more than that. Eric's sleeping face was too big a reward for her. At breakfast the next morning, the protagonist found out they'd been robbed. She asked why the guy didn't wake her up. She said that if they had just left it all gone she would have been fine. Iris said that by the time she got to the party they were already gone. She said Master Eric commanded the army and drove the bandits away. But the guy said he didn't do anything. Iris said she was very glad Eric stayed here and thanked him for his help. At this point Guy asked if that meant he forgave him for being with Leela. But Iris said he was sitting at the table so he should be quiet. And Iris said she didn't know what the bandits were looking for in the children's room anyway. The protagonist didn't remember that the wind spirit told them that he had made a noise and that they were looking for something. The bandits risked everything to get in. The protagonist realized that they wanted to get into the children's room, which is her room. The only thing in her room was her papers. At this point, she told her parents that she had a hunch. She said she thought she could catch all the bandits.